Wake up. Wake up now. And welcome back, once again, to Minecraft from the fog. I see you blending in over there, eh? Uh, well, here we are at the newly revamped homestead. And honestly, I I've been unsure about how to revisit this series. I mean, last time we had our little slice of life. This time we had me uh, getting jump scared by the Guardian appointed to watch over Liberty and Percy as they sleep. <laughs> A oh, long time no see, guys. But to be honest, I I've been thinking that this series has more or less run its course. I mean, I I'm pretty much happy to just retire to this nice little rustic cabin life. And maybe our definitions of rustic cabin are a little different, but I've been thinking the game has updated since, well, a few parts ago. And I haven't really been engaging with that because I've mostly been spending my time in this area. This is our throne. We've conquered numerous worlds, as well as this one. And I'm sure there's more people just waiting out there for us to subjugate them. The kids, and admittedly someone on the Discord, made me this costume so that uh, I'll appear more royal and otherworldly to the distant people I decide to uh, introduce myself to. But before we do that, we do have to take care of a few things around here. Uh, yeah, I know you want to come with, but we just don't know if it's safe. First things first, although the series has kind of run away from its original premise, I've been wondering just what happened to Herobrine. He's been mysteriously absent ever since we defeated the Ender Dragon, almost like he decided I wasn't worth trying to mess with. And we gave him autonomy, but maybe it's time to bring him screaming back into our control. Uh... Hello, usually... Okay, there we go. Take back control. Well, it seems like everything is actually working here. I'll tell you what, we're gonna have to do something to see if any of this is still working. How would you kids like to participate in a seance? Oh, I knew you'd like that one. All right, this way, right this way. Uh, you have your little space for maneuvering through. Feels like it's not running as well as it used to. Uh, maybe I should turn down the draw distance a bit. Uh, all right, so we've got in here the remains of some shrines. We've had them working before. Uh, wait, I'm just going to have to get some netherrack. All right, kids, now be careful. The fire's hot. Put that there. And where's... Wait, there's one of you. Where's the other? I hear you. What are you doing? <sighs> You're hiding. You're a little spooked. Liberty's down for this, but Percy would prefer to watch from a distance, from around the corner. Okay? <laughs> he speaks to us from beyond. It is still working. Okay, and take that, everyone who said I wasn't doing it right. Well... Herobrine is back in play, which, if anything, is actually more confusing. I guess he really was intimidated by my display of power, but I'm also not quite arrogant enough to think that that was the case. Why was he biding his time in this way? I can only hope the extra control allows me what I need to, uh, to keep the advantage, but before I go, uh, you guys have told me that I can actually do something with the Ender Dragon's head. 
Since we're already dabbling in all kinds of devilry in this room, I suppose we might as well take it a step further with uh, one of your older suggestions. Uh, so if we put a lever, like, right here behind you, and switch that on, causing a redstone connection, uh, what will- Oh! It does actually do something! <laughs> oh, well, it's not exactly necromancy, but I suppose it is somewhat on brand for me to behead the god of another dimension. Only to place it in my living room and turn it into essentially the equivalent of one of those singing wallfish. Oh my god. <laughs> the indignity of it is so funny. Look, the kids aren't even scared of it. <laughs> Percy's just kind of like, Daddy, why are you like this? Meanwhile, Liberty just tries to make it a challenge of flying through its mouth in between the, uh, in between the bites. Darwin, I bet you wish you could do something about this. I feel like Darwin is, like, one of those butlers in all those, like, Disney princess movies who just kind of, like, chases around the rowdy princesses trying to stop them from getting into all kinds of trouble, but they're always one step ahead. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are going to have to leave them for much of this episode. In fact, I don't know if I'll be back during the course of this. As soon as I'm done building the rail connection to that still unnamed city, that snowy city off in the distance... Well, we're just gonna have to... we're just gonna have to hoof it. Sleep well, Liberty and Percy. I know you'll keep each other entertained. And you do still have Darwin and, uh, Darwin and Patience to look after you. And where is... I, I swear, not a whole lot of places, uh, not a lot, a lot of places you can go, but I can still never find justice. Oh yeah, there you are. Come on. Come on, justice. Yep. Boop. 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 Uh, who else? Oh, right, uh, kids, just remember to, uh, toss a couple of table scraps down to, down to Hamlet every once in a while, will you? Raid? Hamlet, did you just communicate to me telepathically your rebellious intentions? <laughs> I mean, you stood down pretty quickly once you saw that I was on to you. Uh, maybe, maybe Liberty and Percy told on you. I'm... I got half a mind to come down there. You seriously just tried to put up a fight? I didn't even know that could happen. Oh, a sad day it is when a king has to leave his kingdom. And I'm glad you're both here to see me off. But there's a whole world out there to explore and it's been far too long. I've gotten far too comfortable simply inhabiting my own little corner of it. I need to go off and see what's out there. And it's only now I realize I don't remember how to use the elytra. Oh, whatever, I'll figure it out! Ow. Okay, now it is time to head off. And I guess we'll try key two out of possibly three that I'm thinking it might be. And it was space, not shift like everything else in the game. All right. Well, this uh, see this exit was really just for the masses of uh, of royal subjects that I like to imagine populate the land. Uh, actually, we're going to be taking public transit for the first leg of the trip. Uh, sounds like there's discord within the local population. I just want to get out of here. Yep. Nope. I forgot to wear gold again. Ah, uh, crimes against fashion, and you guys all turn on me. Alright, all this is finally done. And we enter our farthest portal yet. Meaning, this will be the farthest expedition we've ever started. That's the dawn of a new day. This might be the first time I've seen this place actually in the sunlight. Every other time I've been here, it's been an ominous expedition to a place really where I'm using it as a base camp to unearth the secrets below. Always a massive snowstorm. Here it looks downright cozy. Look, the sun reflecting over those frozen lakes in front of it. Alright, now we do have a compass on us, which, oh my god. Oh, we're back. It's... Been a while since I've seen that happen. 
Uh, and you're back to just observing us. Why did you look... Look, I'm used to seeing, like, the silhouettes of other villagers moving around here, but something about that darkened figure and the glowing eyes... I think I've been away for too long. It actually startled me again. All right, but uh, the compass points back in the direction we came from, which means we are heading this way. It's very important to just pick a direction and go, but... I think that as long as long as it points back to our original spawn, we'll always be able to find our way back. Okay, that time was a little less threatening. Uh, but in a way, this almost feels like a return to the very beginning of the series, doesn't it? Look how beautiful that mountain is. I mean, we're once again being pursued by Herobrine, although with the dynamic slightly changed in that he's not here by choice anymore. And we're pretty much only left with the stuff we carry on our backs. A little bit of food, weapons, armor, a boat, a box with a portal back to our house. You know, the basic camping necessities. So what I'm thinking is we can probably get to the top of this mountain and from there look around if there's any interesting features out there. And maybe take flight and see how much ground we can cover actually exploring with the elytra for the first time. I do also have some, uh, some membranes, and we'll try not to sleep for a little while so we can get some more so that we can repair said elytra. And let's just climb a tree as the pioneers did. And wow, look at all that. Looks like there's a canyon up ahead, uh, which may present some opportunities for mining. A swamp to the left. Actually, let's get our spyglass out. My favorite new thing that's been added to Minecraft in quite a while. Hmm, and some pretty large ice biomes over there. All right, let's do this. I've been given the gift of literal flight, and I haven't been using it nearly as much as I should have. Ooh. God, I love this feature so much. It just feels so good. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What is that? What is that? Have I seen a tree like this before? This is very different from the others. Hmm. Uh, do I have shears to maybe collect some samples? I do. What are you guys? Uh, flowering azalea leaves. No, I've, I've had these before. I don't remember quite where I found them, though. They don't appear to be attached to any specific type of tree. Oh, that's kind of strange. Is that like a world generation issue? Right here at the cross between two biomes where different trees start to appear. We've got some large ice spires over there on the right. Maybe we'll head a little over in that direction. Look at this polar biome. Complete with polar bears and... Are these maybe enterable structures? No, I kind of thought for a second that maybe they were igloos. Ah, the absolute majesty of this game. Imagine the nature documentary footage I could get like this. Ah, oh, this game needs to add like digital cameras or something. Uh, and unfortunately, as my uh, as my abilities are limited as far as uh, fireworks go. I think this would be a good time to set sail. Let's just uh, flare and come to a safe landing. Howdy, turtles. Always such a strange feeling in this game, isn't it? When you're looking out over a vast ocean contemplating whether you should set sail. I mean, you have no idea what's on the other side. All you know is that not even being able to see anything on the horizon... Whatever's over there, it's truly a new adventure. Well, let's place you there, and you here. Oh wait, do I have to? Do I have to craft you with that? And now we will set sail. Man, it, it feels so wrong to be going so so far from home. 
I mean, exploring has always been a big part of the Minecraft experience, hasn't it? But now, it actually feels, after all this, like I'm leaving something behind. And I know the kids can take care of themselves, and they have a lot of help, but still, I don't know, something just sucks about being so far away from them. Uh, but if anything, that's just motivation. I will return, that's my vow. Now what is this? We're discovering new things already. This doesn't look like a natural formation. Uh, Alright, what kind of shovel do we have? Efficiency and fortune. Alright, we'll dock here and begin to excavate. There's Wait, there's something else over there. Is it another one? And what broke that kelp? Hang on, this is very, very weird. We're gonna have to be careful, though, because we don't want to let the water in. My torches are behaving very strangely here as well. Ah, oh, this is so bizarre. Just these weirdly straight lines in the middle of the ocean. Uh, um, I'm thinking I'm gonna make a bunch of ladders and see if I can go vertically, perhaps? Okay, we've hit... we've hit stone. Uh, well, at least from here we'll be able to get some stairs going without collapsing the sand. I don't think this actually goes anywhere, though. Uh, certainly the most novel entrance to a mine I've ever discovered. And where does this come out? Is this the ocean, or is this an underground cave? No, I think it's... it's so reflective, but I think that's... wait. Yeah, no, this is all... underneath. Okay, let's stop for air. No, come on, move, move. Huh, it's like a shelf beneath the pyramid. Yeah, I've dug down a little bit more, but I don't seem to be finding anything of note. I just have no idea what to even make of this. I've never seen something like this before. Well, I guess we'll head off once more. It's not... Like I have a boat to sleep with. Is that a drowner? Or, yeah, I definitely think there's some of those water enemies about, and I don't think my fire bow is going to be all that useful against it. Oh, there you are. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, you're hurling tritons. Can I please have it? <laughs> that would be so cool. Alright, uh, let's switch to diamond armor. Alright, inventory is already full again. Okay, I'm going to kill you, because I don't think I've actually killed one of you yet. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, no! No, 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 no! That is not for you! Oh, wow, were you actually taking, like, drowning damage? Do you die when you're out of the water? Whatever, now's not the time for science. Now's the time for exploration and adventure. Dude, if I just say generic stuff like that, it'll probably string together into something profound, right? Now, there is another one of these things out here. And it's even more creepy just coming upon that shape rising above the waterline in the fog of the night. Ooh, okay, so it may not be any different from the other, but we do have Land Ho. And it looks like there's a cave down there. Wait. Oh, we have a village! Okay, uh... Tell you what, I'm gonna camp out just outside the village and just kind of observe it for the night. Uh, because we don't want them all dying to... <gasps> Enemies. 
That was pretty cool right there, you disappearing in the transition while I got out my spyglass. But you are active even all the way over here, even a continent away. This is all new ground, meaning, well, just about anything can be here. Whole new couple of updates that have happened and a whole lot of world that wasn't possible before. It looks like a decently sized village. Probably got a fair few professions here, a little trade booth. Yeah, and they're defensible, being right on the water like that. I definitely think we can establish a relationship with these guys. And maybe even plop down one of our portal specials. Alright, uh, imagine if one of them was to look over here right now, see the glow of my torch. See, one of my favorite things about this series is that when you really think about things objectively and from the villager's perspective, I am actually so much worse than Herobrine. Because Herobrine is no threat to anybody else, except for that one armorer in, uh, in Dunwich whose house he burned down. I'm so much, like, I'm the one who shows up and brings all kinds of untold horrors to their doorstep. And I always come, basically, promising riches and wealth and adventure. Okay. Like, they gain access to all these new things. I build all these structures for them and bring them all kinds of new materials and jobs. They become more connected than ever, meeting other villagers for the first time. And I'm the common thread. I'm the thing that... Okay, what is that achievement for? I'm, I'm the common thread that unites them. All of their stories begin with a mysterious figure walking out of the woods and wanting to say hi. Oh, okay, okay, it's just for surviving a hundred days. You would think it would be a lot longer than that, but it's probably only from the last time I updated from the fog. Now, people have told me to come back because there's been a lot of updates to From the Fog, and honestly, I'm not sure that's true. I mean, people tell me about all kinds of, like, boss fights and weird events, but as far as I can tell, the mod itself hasn't been updated since, like, June. Ah, oh, screw it. It's raining. The mood is right. I think I'm ready to introduce myself. It is the perfect night for this. You gonna tell me otherwise? Now, who do we think is likely to be the leader of this here establishment? Probably not that sheep. I hear kitties, so we know that they're civilized. Hey, kitty. Oh, you're a Snow White kitty and a band of pals. Anyone here? Oh, the village guardian hasn't spotted me yet. Uh, you immediately uh, go to work farming. Yeah, never mind the man behind you. And I think this is going to be the start of a good trade relationship. You've got all kinds of professions and a whole bunch of you willing to work for me. You've got a librarian. That is perfect. Yeah, this truly is seeming like quite a cozy little town. Backed onto the water, forests surrounding the other sides. And like I always judge places for, it is great looking on a rainy day. Oh yeah, you guys are getting a portal for sure. You're my connection to the new world. And you guys are just absolutely awash in kitties. It's like half your population. You guys got a really strong agriculture and just regular culture game going, uh, which makes you a great addition to the new empire. Unfortunately, it would seem we're a little bit light on the obsidian. So we're gonna have to do some local mining, which is just as well. It'll give us a good opportunity to see if there's any good cave systems nearby. Oh, look, you've even got a convenient little dock for me to pull my boat alongside. And with that, I think we're ready to head into the caves. And we might start right here. I mean, look, I'm seeing magma blocks actually underneath the village. That is so cool. You're- this isn't the edge of the land. You're actually suspended 
over entire systems. Oh, we are definitely going to want to check this out. I should have brought some potions for this. Uh, but with the help of the magma, all things are possible. I'm hearing, I'm hearing bad guys. I hear you over there, so there's definitely caves. We've just got to start trying to break into them. Uh, but this is going to be an uphill battle. Then again, we've already got something. There you are. And you just want me to know you're there so much so that I got startled by that zombie's reflection in the waterfall. Look. Look at this place. All of this. They're, they're always, they're always just above something like this. And yet in my cave dweller world, it took me like hours to find anything even like remotely this size. Uh, this game's world generation really does love to screw with me. But you can never go wrong with iron. Yeah, all of these caves are still partially submerged. With the exception of that big canyon, well, this all still very much is underwater. Hmm. I, I haven't really seen one generate like this before. Usually the, usually the submerged bits terminate once you actually get inside, and it's one or the other. I do need obsidian. And there is light down there, possibly suggesting lava. And the elevator is already here, so I guess we might as well use it. Eh, maybe I should have kept the elytra. So many bad guys, so little time. Alright, well, let's uh, take advantage of our air supremacy. And eh, never mind. New World Diamonds, a new first. There we go. And you, and all of you. Thanks you very much. This expedition is proving fruitful already. And we've got lava down there. Yeah, using creepers strategically has actually become something of uh, something of a preferred strategy. Another preferred strategy is just running right through a bunch of stuff, because at a certain point, the combat just becomes repetitive. Uh oh You guys, too, were dabbling in, uh, in deep-down mining, were you? I just came here looking for obsidian, but maybe we'll find a little something more? Uh, I'm gonna get so lost in here. We've got to deal. First things first, we've got to deal with these uh, potential poisonous spiders. You didn't do much to save your own life, bud. Well, let's press on, because I know I saw more of these things down here. Yep, not what I was looking for. There we are. Uh, who else? Uh, these things are always so extensive and so easy to get lost in. Yeah, that's right. You fight amongst yourselves. It'll buy me time to make my escape. See, I, I'm the worst at this because I, I never apply the Lethal Company strats to this. Where in Lethal Company, you know, you go into the large abandoned structure, make sure you just get what you need and get out. Here I can never help but dig myself deeper and deeper, almost literally. Another one over here. I've uh, got some pumpkin seeds. Maybe have some new agriculture, perhaps? There we are. Uh, but nothing of tremendous note. And in fact, there's nothing of possible tremendous note because, again, I'm here for... I'm here for obsidian. Why am I doing all this? I think we've come up beneath the village. Ah, uh, so there are easier ways to do this. Uh, maybe we need... no. No, that's not the dock. There's a much higher level of mines. Ah, uh, so high that we're actually seeing grass blocks. 
Oh, you guys have a very strange history with this place, but it seems like the commonality is the same. You all dug down until eventually you dug too deep and all made a pact to never speak of it again. We saw the same thing with Innsmith, Dunwich, and I would hope New Dunwich wouldn't attempt it because, well, if they ever did, they'd fall straight through into the lava below. I kind of gave them a pretty good incentive not to dabble in these things. Although one could say they're already there since they're literally in the nether, but I digress. Alright, well, let's start from right here beside this stuff and try to swim up. Oh, wow. But this is unmistakably outside. And there is our new place. <laughs> Imagine this guy shows up, tries to build some weird structure, says he needs something from underground, disappears for like days, and then just rises up out of the ocean in front of the village. Yeah, we're building our reputation early on, it seems. But I think now, look, we may not have found obsidian, but we did find a whole bunch of, well, among other things, gunpowder. Actually, I was going to say that should make us capable of looking for lava above ground using the elytra, but that aerial reconnaissance is not even necessary, it seems. Perfect. All that and... Hello? I was going to say all that, and I didn't even need to go underground, although I'm certainly glad I did. What is this? Hang on, let's maneuver around that at first and see what we can see. What is this substance? This is something totally new, like gray terracotta. And you? Light blue glazed terracotta. Where does this come from? Is this... Is there a structure here? Or is this a naturally occurring block? Hang on, this is fascinating. Yeah, there's brick here. Brick slabs, even. I, I've never seen this before. I've never seen naturally occurring brick. Okay, hang on. We're going to go up there, and we are going to... We're going to solidify that lava and find out what's going on here. This is so... I don't know if it's supposed to look like this, or if this is a texture pack thing... But it's so bizarre. I'm destroying all of this. I can't find any evidence that it's like a fixed structure at all. But I really can't find much evidence of anything. Look, it stretches all the way through to the other side of the wall. All right, well... Something's getting brought back to decorate my base. Why is it like this? These are brick stairs. Goes down pretty deep. Seems to form a ring. Yeah, there's something else here as well. Okay, we need to build ourselves a chest for storing all this. That lava's dripping down from there. We're getting new stuff still. And we're going to continue to do so. Wow, that makes a weird sound when we pick it up. Mud bricks. All of this beneath the lava pool. Uh, yeah, we're definitely... That's cobblestone. I think we're about to hit something real. Yep. Yep. Is this potentially some type of dungeon? Here we are. Oh, what are you? A loom. 
This is so weird. This is uh, some more terracotta, more bricks, but none of it seems to form like a real coherent structure. Although this looks something more like a design. Uh, maybe we should block some of this water from getting in. Like, it feels like a building. These are presumably what should be man-made materials, and yet they're arranged almost as if it's just like a regular cave structure or like minerals that form underground. Okay, somebody's definitely going to have to explain this one to me. Although I certainly am grateful for the free bricks. And yes, I am very much aware of the fact that I'm basically laying waste to what may be a significant archaeological site, but I don't really care. I'm just trying to penetrate what might be a juicy, useful center. I mean, look, that loom certainly isn't a natural formation, right? I mean, you're not going to tell me that was just here. Yeah, and a ladder. And a ladder. And lava. We're gonna we're gonna seal that up. Yeah, I was kind of hoping you would show up. I actually need your guts for my elytra. Thank you. Hello. Why is there a fire over here? Oh. Oh yeah. There's a little bit of a blaze spreading due to uh, due to the nearby lava pit because I got close. All right, uh, let's uh, let's perform a community service for this village, shall we? And try to keep the fire from spreading too too much. Go, get rid of all this burnable material. Make sure it's far from anything that might work. Doing this with the flint and steel may not send the right message, but you get the idea. There we are. And I wonder if we were to pour water on this, if we'd find something similar underneath. Well, we've got our obsidian, so we can finally build our nether portal now. And that really did feel like ancient archaeology, you know? Like even the precursors to this civilization. Everything made of, like, mud and brick and terracotta. All just sitting there buried, all... Really just remnants of what may have been a building at one point. It's only the ladder and the loom that make that somewhat clear. It's weird that archaeology in this game is so interesting, but here we are. Let me help you out with that, buddy. Here, let me, uh... Oh, I see. You're smart enough to just not engage with creepers. I never actually observed that behavior before, but I suppose it makes sense. But on a dark and stormy night, much like the one we arrived in, let us complete our nefarious process. Right after we eliminate any interlopers. Well, in the dark of the night, while they're all asleep in their beds, an unholy fire lights. And hang on, let's have a look. So our spawn is right back that way. Another dock almost acting as a beacon pointing back towards me. So let's see where this is relative to our own stuff. Nope! Well, we came through just in time. <laughs> Good thing the creeper didn't come through too, or we would have been in some trouble. Uh, but if we make our way up and over this hill, uh, maybe... All right, I don't have I don't have gold equipment. Uh, I could make some, or I could just be really, really cool. Yeah, you know, we've got some of these uh, magma cubes doing their thing. But I do not see a path to where we came from. Oh, we might have to tunnel through this wall here. And it looks like we may potentially be able to get a better view from over here. Although it is the opposite direction. And no. No, I don't believe this is the right way. Oh dear, it may not be easy to forge a new a new branch of the Transnether Rail System here. I see blue fire over in that direction, which indicates soul sand. And a gas. Ooh, and I get the achievement, Hot Taurus Destinations. Well, I don't really have time for skeletons right now, I only want you. That's 
right, you two fight each other. I want you over land so I can collect your collectibles. Come on, here you are, you're taking some AA. Yep. Oh, look at this, there's like bone towers. I'm the only one who gets to have a bone thrown around here. That is so dumb that that didn't hit you. That is so dumb that I didn't hit that. Uh, why are guests seemingly so rare in this game now? No, no, I don't want you destroying the bone towers. There you are, you're down. And we need to put ourselves out. Did you drop anything good for me? I need gas tears. Ah, you did. Just one, but we got it. And it seems there is another fortress down below. Meaning another potential blaze farm. Oh yes, even if we can't make a bridge connection, this place is useful for all kinds of reasons. Discovering this biome is actually extremely useful. through here. You guys are probably going to get upset with me. So let's just hide. We'll need to do something about that lava flow. Will there be a creeper still right here? Yep! Good thing obsidian is obsidian. Although, you did actually succeed in severing the connection. Huh, it seems the Chicken Liberation Front has extended their goals to trying to stop my expansion outside of this realm of reality. But it's not going to help. The rain just seems to follow me, doesn't it? And apparently it's not the only thing. I mean, everywhere I go, it, it seems my arrival is always shrouded in fog. Oh, what a twist. It turns out I'm the thing from the fog all along. Well, it may have taken us 20 full episodes and three bonus episodes to get here, but... Well, at least it finally happened. I'm embarking on something of a dangerous mission now. Uh, I'm gonna try flight in the nether. I mean, because it's so difficult to navigate, I figure there's no better way than to use local resources to load up on a whole bunch of these things. Yeah, this has to go. This has to go. See, the problem is we're kind of at like the roof of this system, which makes it, ooh, which makes it really, really difficult to figure out which direction we even need to travel in. Oh, this is extremely dangerous. Extremely dangerous. And yet, yeah, none of this really looks familiar to me. We're inflicting a lot of damage on ourselves. Probably take one of these in case we need to keep some of the Pumbas at bay. And we really gotta make sure we keep on top of our health. We've got chicken and we've got pork chops. But I think, yeah, I think we're traveling in the wrong direction. Even though I don't see how we could travel in the other one. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh, another thing is we got to keep an eye on the health of our elytra or else we're not going to have any way of getting back. Yeah, as cool as this is, I'm not feeling good about this at all. I saw those trees, and for a second I thought it was like some kind of nether village. Alright, let's return. Now what's going on over here in Bone Town? Uh, another guest, which, you know what, I think we can hunt. I think that'll be a good idea. There you are. 
Although, eh, the one-hit kill is cool, but I'm not sure. Did you drop anything? Yes, another guest here. All right, we're finding you plentifully over here. Oh, wow, it really is just a fiery underworld. Ooh, okay, we've broken through. We've broken through to the other side, and what should be the direction of our home? What should be? You guys shouldn't be angry with me. I'm wearing gold. Oh, but getting lost here would be disastrous. I've left most of the important stuff at home. Uh, but it's not going to be easy to navigate. We have got some landmarks. That looks like it might be me. And no, it's just really weird world generation. Oh, but yes, here we are. Here we are. Okie dokie. So it is in that direction. It's just quite, quite a long way. A bridge would be one heck of an engineering project. Maybe it's possible, actually, if we go along the ceiling. That might actually be the smartest way to go about this. All I do know is that this elytra, for all the excitement we put it through today, is starting to wear itself down, and I really don't want that. Actually, I'm not quite sure which portal this is. Hang on, that's really, really strange, because I see what looks like the Transnether Rail System down there. Hang on. Yeah, that definitely didn't put itself there. What? Where does this go? It doesn't have a sign. It doesn't have a rail connection. What is it? Oh, is this... No, this is, this is the one I thought it was. This is where we left from, so where's... Where's the rail connection that I built at the end? Huh, I am very confused, but... I'm also very happy to be back. At one time, this seemed like such a... It's, it's so crazy, because throughout this series, as you explore more and more, and as you build more and more infrastructure... What used to be the distant lands, the crazy new discovery, eventually just becomes a bus stop, your connecting flight. That's the cool thing about Minecraft, is no matter how far you go, you can always do more. You can always set new goals for yourself, and you can always expand your world. It's a history that you develop as you play on a world, and it makes the game really, really special. Oh, I see. The rail connection was over here. That's why I didn't recognize it. Okay, so yeah, we, we know which direction we're in, we know our relative distance. That's about all there is to it. Alright, I think we're in the ceiling now. And of course we want to be careful because any one of these could break and send us plummeting to the space below, although we do have an elytra to try and save ourselves. Uh, please don't be mad. There we go. Well, we're through a pretty good distance. It's good to actually have this space to see what we're doing. Oh no. Uh, what do we do about this? Ow, 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 ow. Yeah, what, what, uh, why is it coming from above? I've never seen that particular problem before. Here we are, coming through to here. So we're starting to see at least some familiar territory. Uh, inventory absolutely full of nonsense. Yep, so our portal is on the left there, uh, meaning that we overshot it by a little bit, but we do have the means to make the trip back and forth now. Ah, uh, it is so, so good to be back here again. You have no idea. Honestly, when you know you can't just turn around and head home whenever you want, uh, it makes you just absolutely long for it, even in Minecraft. Especially when you know that you don't really know the exact way back. Absence truly does make the heart grow fonder. However, I know I could just go knock on the door, but 
I need a better way, I think, to say Daddy's home. How about we ring our own bell, shall we? In this case, ringing our own bell is kinda working in two definitions here. <laughs> and listen to them, they're all giggling with excitement. Ooh, he's back! Uh, it's like when, uh, it's like when they hear the car pull up in the driveway. Look, they're right there on the other side of the door. Ah, uh, right where I left them. Hi! Uh, I don't even know how many days it's been. Uh, maybe Liberty just wanted to see the inside of the Soul Tower. They can't open doors, you know. Look at that. Being able to watch the sunrise from the comfort of my own home. I don't know if it's going to come across in the video, but I've been recording for like a few hours now, so it almost didn't feel like the same world anymore. Weird the attachments you can make in a world randomly generated and all the all the actually like concrete stuff defined by me. So you got a bed here and what do little girls love more than a bed with a canopy? So I was thinking maybe we uh, maybe we do something with this. I'm not quite sure about a design here. <laughs> there we go. Now when you have your little slumber parties, you can be all comfy cozy inside your little fort. You can set up like pillows along the edges so that you make a little wall for yourself, all while still being in sight of patience. It may seem a little bit cramped, but consider the fact that they're a foot tall. Hmm, we can make decorated pots out of bricks. I wonder, can we maybe put, like, plants in those or something? Ooh, and calibrated skulk sensor. What does that do? Hang on, we'll try making one. So we'll put you there, go you, you, and you. There's a you, and how do you work? Hmm, you seem to have sort of a redstone effect around you. Let's also try to have some fun with bricks. So if we grab you and place you right, say, here. Oh, wow, that's actually a big boy. The thing made it look so much smaller. So I just had a look on the wiki. There we go, on. Oh, we can put you there, and then you there. Okay, so it's really just a decoration thing, but at this point you might as well just be like a regular block, right? And I also found out that the, that the Skulk sensor that we built, basically it just has longer range, and it's easier to use with, like, redstone. So I don't know if we have particular use for it. Uh, if anything, I wish these things would shut up. Anyways, if we go like that... And like that, and like that. There you go. I mean, I didn't have any vines to use for this purpose, or glow berries. But there, now you've got a little space where uh, you can sit and peek out when you hear a spooky noise in the middle of the night. And I'll probably get jump scared by this little fellow often. But every once in a while, it, it is fun. People have gotten so attached to the series and to these characters. But it is sometimes fun to just come in and check in, you know? And it seems, for better or worse, that we've pulled Herobrine back into the mix. Kind of weird that we had a few whole episodes without his presence, but... Well, now that it's back, it is instantly felt. But yeah, it'll probably end up being a bit of a shorter video, but I just wanted to stop in and say hi to these little guys one more time before the year is over. I almost can't believe that all of this was this year. I know I say this in every part at this point, but it all just feels like such a distant memory, you know? Like, I've always known these characters, like it's always been a thing in my life. Looking back, I almost can't imagine that all this started the same way as any Minecraft world. But I suppose that's true of any world, right? Or anything you choose to do in gaming or in your life. You start from nothing, and eventually you look back and think, wow, all this came from nothing. I say that because this episode in particular has been kind of a departure from that. These guys were hardly there, 
and yet their presence was sorely missed. Felt like I was just kind of drifting all on my own out there. You know what, I feel like this episode could use a little bit more, though. And, you know, I did just get an idea for the bed. I mean, sure, they've got plenty of space right now, but... You know, what kind of daddy would I be if I didn't spoil them with a little bit more? There is a new biome that you guys have been begging me to search for this entire time. Ever since the update dropped. And I am not going to stop until I find it. I have to generate some new world, but I think we'll get there. Seeing the sun rise over a wide open plain like this is like what I used to have dreams about Minecraft being when I was in high school, you know? The kind of thing you'd never think would actually be capable of being achieved in this game. Like, it's the kind of thing you hope for for a sequel, but here it is. But, over on this side, I'm seeing yet another of those pyramids. They're all over the waters around this place. Which is kind of weird. I'm wondering if it doesn't maybe have something to do with their safety. Like, maybe it's some kind of, some kind of protective grid that keeps evil at bay? Or maybe the whole thing is one siren island that uh, keeps ships wrecking on their shore. Well, it doesn't deter the wraith of the wreck. But maybe we can find some goodies within? Wow, yeah, no, this thing is truly messed up. Uh, but we can, we can get some stuff, I suppose. Yeah, all this stuff is useful for making more and more of those. Nope. All this is really useful for making more fireworks. You know what? We've come far enough that I don't need to be worried about experimenting. Let's try taking a sip of this suspicious stew. Why not? I don't like this. Ugh. Okay, well, there's a horrifying effect that I never even knew was in the game. Man, it's just like those PSAs they used to play for us in kindergarten. Never eat strange bowls of stew that you find in sunken shipwrecks. At the time, I thought they were exaggerating. Huh, now this is an interesting little place. I'm not sure if I'm going to bring it into the fold completely, but it is in a cool location. Wait, wait! It's not just in a cool location. It's in exactly the location I've been looking for. I think up on that hill is a cherry blossom forest. Oh, I've got to bring some samples back and start growing them back home. Oh, this has been one of like the biggest things you guys have been asking me to see. And to see it here, oh, it's just so gorgeous. You know what? I want to see it in the full daylight, so I'm going to steal somebody's bed. And we'll wait until morning to go over there. Oh, hey guys, I'm basically God, by the way. Oh yeah, I have definitely got to get some of these. You know what? Maybe I should build, like, a greenhouse or something. Some place where I can sit around and muse on all the strange specimens that I brought from other biomes. Yeah, plus, if anything, it could be like that Norwegian vault where they keep all the seeds in an apocalyptic scenario. Uh, and new new trees means new leaves, new new trunks and wood. Oh, and look, it even the flowers even fall down. That is so cool. All right, uh, first things first. Shears. We've got some of those and. Uh, we get some new recipes to go along with it. Uh, we may have to make some may have to make some inventory space. The azalea leaves can go because we've got those at home. Get a bunch of these, and we will end up chopping this thing down, but not before I take a whole bunch. And don't worry, we will replant it because uh, we're all about conservation around here. 
Conservation, of course, in the sense that I am all about transplanting invasive species and having one biome take over another just to see what'll happen. Uh, but that is conservation, isn't it? I mean, something will live and something will die, such as the cycle of life. And chopping you down with your twisting branches is going to be a little bit of an additional chore. But I'm sure we can make it work. We'll keep some of you for, uh, we'll keep some of you in log form and we'll keep some of you as planks. There we are. Uh, what should we put down? What don't we need? Uh, we don't really need this quartz. We've got plenty back home. And there we go. Cherry sapling. From that one, all we need to create a whole forest of our own. Oh yeah, Sapling City. We've now got five of them. And I'm actually thinking, because this one, if this, if we consider this to be north, or rather this would be south, considering how we oriented the other villages, this would be more to the east of the other one, and potentially more in line with our original portal. So it may actually be beneficial to put one here and have this be where the train goes. Let's just make sure that we leave one here. And that should be all we need. You guys may think I'm like a weenie skipping through the fields and picking flowers and petals, but uh, trust me, I'm really quite horrifying when you get to know me. So I just heard some running that I do not think was me. So that's something to consider. And I don't think chickens sound like that. Even as I make my way back to the other village, I'm still being stalked. Alright, now it is just about time uh, to make some upgrades to your sleeping arrangements, don't you think? Uh, first I better bank some of this inventory. So we go like that. There we go. And they can have their, you know, little, uh, little cubby hole down here. And come on up here, and then you can crouch and just sort of barely not make it. Uh, but that's okay, because we are going to be building you a canopy. Alright, well, maybe we'll place a ladder or something along the outside for ease of access, but we can also go like this, there we are, and like that, nope, get down here. And that should allow us to use these things, and we can get you your very own magic tree fort. How pretty is that? And I guess it doesn't really matter that we can't fit in here if they can. There we go for the aesthetic. And I think that's looking pretty nice. And we'll just have here and here as your entrances that you can crawl through. And I think that that's looking pretty nice. What about you? Look, it'll even flower and drop petals from it. <laughs> I can just imagine every time I walk through here, I hear them yell from up top, like, invaders! And they start, like, throwing their balled-up garbage and, like, Funyun wrappers down at me. Now that that's done, though, let's have a look at what one can actually do with these things. So if we place that down and use the axe, yep, we can, uh, ooh, we can turn it into straight-up pretty pink, which is nice. Uh, and we can make it into cherry planks, which are also, you guessed it, pink. Oh, well, I'm sure we'll find some use for that. All right, we can use an ender pearl and a blaze powder to make an eye of ender. And then we can use a guest here and go like that. Or like that. There we go. And get ourselves an end crystal. So if we go and uh, place that somewhere... Hmm, it doesn't seem to want me to actually place this. That's odd, so what can I actually do with it? Can I maybe only place it on certain types of blocks? 
Actually, apparently it can only be placed on either bedrock or obsidian, and since we're not likely to obtain any bedrock anytime soon, at least not without sheets, uh, let's see if it actually works on the crying obsidian. What do you think? Right in the middle here, I think, would be a good spot. Uh, we stash it right there on top of the bookcase, and... Ah, uh, it doesn't count. Alright, guess I'll have to get some... Uh, hey. I was just coming here to get some lava from the nether. Well, I guess you're a couple of survivors of, uh, of the Great Explosion, huh? Well, I never thought I'd see you guys again, but I'm happy you're here. I don't actually have a lead to bring you back right now, so... Yeah, you can chill for a while longer, right? It's been like six or seven months. What's a few more? <laughs> Probably more six or seven months at this rate. Oh, wow. You have been on the hunt. Oh, wait, you... Uh, you took quite a beating here. I know it's been a while since I've checked in. Let me give you a one-up. You're doing great work. You're keeping these people safe, and that's all any of us can ask for. I mean, I'm the one that put them here, but hey, this whole venture has been extremely profitable in my defense. Alright, now we should be ready. Are you two enjoying your new bed slash fort? I knew you would. But now it's time to finish our decor here. Oh, it is so funny how now that you guys can freely navigate the house, I just always turn around and you're there, no matter where we are. So I'll place that there. And this should work right there we go. Oh, now this is a proper mystic library. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm liking how this is coming out. Uh, we should probably get a couple of torches on this here, get it properly lit. And now it's a party. Anyway, since we appear to be done here, pat pat Percy. And I can hear Liberty giggling somewhere off there. Maybe she's just found some books she knows she's not supposed to look at. Oh, Liberty seems to have taken an interest in this thing. What kind of spells are you planning? I don't want to hear anything about summoning the Ender Dragon again. Although, if it does break through that glass ceiling and drown, it would be pretty funny. Liberty, I'm not going to tell you yes or no, but just know that I don't condone it officially. As always, I'm taking all ideas for things I should do, maybe things I should build, places I should see. And maybe we will decide to take on the Wither at some point. I mean, while well, we've still got this awesome bow going. But I also think that it's time to expand our horizons with Minecraft. I get the feeling that uh, maybe, I don't know, this is just something I've been dreaming about while I lay sleeping in my crematory oven. That I'm not the only one. That maybe somewhere out there, someone else survived the wreck that stranded me here. And is maybe going through something similar to what I am. I don't know, it's just a weird feeling I've been having. And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this mod out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.